The California Golden Seals are back in the playoffs, but needless to say, there is a tiny bit, an ever so slightly tiny bit of doubt as to whether or not we're going to accomplish anything. We sneak into the playoffs, we have to go up against Edmonton, who we failed against in the past, and after, again, some disappointing individual seasons... It's tough to find some optimism. We'll go with that. I want to get to a couple of your comments before we talk about what this lineup is and what this episode is shaping up to be. Uh, first of all, Brickwall Wilson goes to the Hall of Fame. He, he will. Again, it'll be up to you guys who goes to the Hall of Fame. I expect Brickwall to at least be on the ballot. Redden is unworthy of the franchise potential. It's tough to say that he hasn't been the biggest disappointment, I think, in any of my series. And it's tough for those of you who watch the Sea Cattle series, which, by the way, should totally be the new name for the new team. It's tough to top Jake Bengoa. Redden has eclipsed him and more. That is all I'll say. Uh, Aslan McKay, if I'm saying that correctly. Um, damn. Hopefully China's cool. Glad I can help. That's just crazy though so i don't uh i don't know how to react to that but that is pretty sweet uh indeed i almost jinxed the fact that we could have not made the playoffs so there was that there is more discussion of player types lineup combos uh, killer socks bringing up the fact that you know i don't blame you for saying that the series is getting a little bit stale because i think the last episode kind of shows that we're in that holding pattern I do think, though, this episode, regardless of the outcome, will go a long way in helping set the tone for the rest of this series. Hopefully. Hopefully. Getting to a couple of others. I was honestly hoping this team, uh, this year, the team would tank. You know, fuck it. Let's talk about it. That's pretty much what this is. This is the last hurrah for this team. And there's a chance that we've already waited too long which I talked about a few seasons ago. I left it up to you guys at the beginning of this season if we wanted to keep certain players on the team. And, of course, you know, it was Nazaroff, Vita Luoma that were bumped down. This is it, though. If this team can't put it together, we're moving on from the old guard that haven't been able to develop. Is that Fragapani? Is that Redden? Is that potentially Ivanov? Sure. Sure. I mean, it's it's tough to move it's tough to move on from the faces of the series, but I think when you have uh, Garber comparing us to the St. Louis Blues, that just kind of shows where we are right now, doesn't it? So here's what this team looks like, <clears throat> taking into account player performance throughout the season, taking into account what I feel like still gives us the best chance to win and your suggestions. The top line is going to be Gregory Cox with Kim Nylander and Steven Moroz. I am going with two sniper, one playmaker setup. Second line is going to be Milan Svoboda with Howard Fragapani and Ben McCauley. Third line, Sergei Nazarov is back. Sergei Nazarov is back. We're giving it a shot. We dropped Boro, who was a 20-point getter in the regular season, he is with Ivanov and Redden, three of the guys who should have led this team to success, and it just hasn't happened. Ryder McAmmond, Andrew Sarno, and Henry Yang make up the fourth line. So we'll see how that goes defensively. It's basically the same, though. Shattenkirk, Zilo, Richter, Francois, Holmberg, Bukaboom, the goaltender, Stu Crab. Special teams for the record. Uh, yeah, it's uh, we'll see. <laughs> we have one defenseman in Zeeler to try and make this work. The Nazarov call-up is a little bit of a risk. I mean, down in the AHL, we still have Vita Luoma. We sent down Burrow. You have Soro and Francois there as well. But I'm, I'm fairly confident, we'll say, with what we've done. If players struggle, maybe we see a Vita Luoma get called up. Like, I'm not afraid, as you are well aware, if you've watched any of my series, I'm not, I'm not afraid to change up the lines mid-playoff series. There is the outside chance of that happening. There is a good chance of that happening. We do need to take a look at what we're up against, though, in the form of the Oilers. Now, I will say this. Whether or not this series goes 7, 4, who the hell knows how they could basically win it in 3, I don't know. But 
I don't want to say I'm looking past this series, but it'll be nice just to get some clarity on whether or not this team is finally just dead in the water and we try that quick little mini rebuild. Top line for the Oilers, Sam Reinhart, Connor McDavid, and Clifford Bolton. Former third overall pick. Second line is Sebastian Ajo, Kari Koivinen, and Alexander Nylander. Third line of Oral Oleg Korolyuk with Serge Autoreus and Yessi Puliyarvi. Lawrence Erskine, Zachary Gore, and Norm McCutcheon make up the fourth line. If we look at the defense, Adam Chung still there for them with Charlie McAvoy. Ivan Provorov with Louis Kron and Felix Reefers with Reese Lee. The goaltender is Robinson Emerson. Right. Healthy scratches, Bernard Vermet, Martin Bloodoff, and Anders Bjork. We have a chance. I, I think. I hope. I can't hide the fact that I think this is going to be a one-and-done playoff appearance. But we'll see what happens. First period here in Game 1 is scoreless, so we'll jump right into it. Second period, Edmonton takes the lead on a Charlie McAvoy goal. Do we have anything, anything to give in this series? That's the question. As Stephen Moreau's 30-goal scorer gets on the board, the future's bright because of players like him. We still have that outside chance. Moreau's with the goal. And we're going to overtime in game one. We are going to stay on this menu. Let's see what happens. Overtime. Will it end quickly? Can we get a road win to kick off this series? It's looking a tad bit shaky. Eight minutes in now. And Edmonton wins it. Prover off. Crab kept us in it. The offense had no answer for Emerson. And the Oilers take game one. Right. Right, right, right. That is a tad bit rough. I'm going to keep the lines the same. We'll potentially change things up for game two. But for now, just seeing what we can do. First period here, and we do get the opening goal. Dylan Redden. And what could be your final episode with this team, realistically? He gets the opening goal of the game. Second period... Let's just let's just get the third period underway, shall we? Let's just get the third period underway, shall we? If we don't score, I'm skipping. Yeah, I'm skipping. Poof, Jesus Christ. All right. All right. Wow. That's where we are, huh? That's where we are as a team. We put up a great fight. In that first game, just couldn't get the other goal. And then we just get destroyed. Just destroyed. The question is, what do I do with the lineup right now? And I gotta be honest. I'm making changes. The goaltending has to stay the same. For obvious reasons. The defense will pretty much stay the same. I mean, we're still good on that front. But forward-wise, Dylan Redden has played his final game as a Golden Seal. He'll be leaving via free agency. We're not going to resign him. Dylan Redden, former number one pick, franchise potential, the man who was supposed to lead this team. And while he's capable of scoring 30 goals... Outside of the cup run, ever since we lost that cup final, he just, I mean, you know, playoff-wise, he hasn't been that bad. You know, I think, you know, the low point totals overlooked, or, you know, was looked at a bit too much when he's capable of scoring goals. It's like you look at the numbers and you can't help but just want to give him an opportunity, but I can only imagine how much he's looking for. And I'm tempted to just pull the trigger right now and just take guys out of the lineup that I know I'm going to move on from. Because I know we're only down by two. We're fucking toast. Let's be honest. 
we are whether or not we should be is irrelevant. We're screwed. Flat out. Yeah, he's he's done here. He's obviously not getting that. There's no way. And Nazarov as well is also looking still for nine million. So Red and Nazarov are gone at the end of this anyway. And I, I don't see how we're possibly going to beat Edmonton. I just don't. So, Dylan Redden has played his final game as a Golden Seal. Howard Fragapani, who was our leading scorer, our very first pick, I think has also played his final game as a Golden Seal. He has been capable of some decent point totals in the past. Cup run, he was okay. Like, he's not the worst playoff performer in the world, but there is inconsistencies. It's just more of the same. I think Howard Fragapani has played the last game for our team as well, and Sergei Nazarov is going to be taken out of the lineup as well. We're going to bring in Boro. I'm going to give Vito Luoma a chance to play for a job next year, and we're going to bring in Francois, and I don't think I'm done with the changes yet. Ivanov's an interesting one where he hasn't been necessarily terrible. He's been pretty good as a second-line producer. Yeah, I don't know if Ivanov's going anywhere. He might. He might. Big question of whether or not I call up uh, Soro or not here. You know what? I'm going to call up Soro and we'll go best lines and uh, see who it brings in. We, we have to pull the trigger on resetting. We have to reset. There is no doubt in my mind that at this point, we pull the trigger, we reset, we change up the core of this team, maybe avoid making the playoffs in the next two years and see what we can do. But I think Redden and Fragapani have both played their final games here in Oakland. First period of game three is scoreless. Second period is not a goal apiece. Stephen Moreau scores again. I'm just going to sim the third period because I think I think we're done. So And we end up losing Alex Nylander. A decent effort there from Crabb in that game. The offense just could not beat Emerson. And we're down 3 to nothing to the Oilers, which if I were to have told you that, you probably wouldn't have been surprised. The fact that we've only scored three goals when we have multiple 20-goal scorers on this team... That, perhaps, is surprising. And you could say, oh, it doesn't help that you dropped your two best players. Are they really our two best players, though? First period, Connor McDavid with the lone goal. Second period, third period, Morose's goal is not enough. The Edmonton Oilers sweep the California Golden Seals, and thus ends an era. As we are going to look to take a step back, for the next season or two, I refuse to be the Minnesota Wild. No disrespect to the Minnesota Wild, but for me, it's not, oh, we made it to the first round. Oh, man, we made it to the second round. Holy shit, yeah, and then you fall short. I'm not saying Oilers fans are happy about it. It's more Oilers management. I'm not going to sit by at this point. We're going to be making changes, and we're going to be making changes right the fuck now. Right now. I'm going to go through the draft. And we'll see what happens. Now, the North Bay Duel and Narwhals are advancing, which I suppose isn't surprising, given what their, you know, given what their top line is, thanks to the uh, send-downs. But I want to get a quick look at what this team's shaping up to be. And I'm just going to rip the Band-Aid off. And maybe, just maybe, as the North Bay Duel and Narwhals win the Calder Cup... The Oilers won the Stanley Cup, so we did lose to the eventual winners. But maybe, just maybe, we can end this episode on an optimistic note. Because I am... <sighs> I just... I am so disappointed. As the Oilers ended up beating Tampa in the Stanley Cup Final. I do want to look at the point production among the uh, Doolin Narwhals. But yeah, there you go. Absolutely brutal. And it, it would have messed up the lines because of call-ups and players that are, you know, on expiring deals. So, screw it. Edmonton wins the Cup and the President's Trophy. A quick look at the awards in which we did not have any. Former goalie Eli Maroon 
won the Jennings. I know I... Fuck. Hold on. There we go. Yeah, I lost him on the Rocket Richard, too. I was going to say, I know I didn't look at that, but... Uh, Ockerland is the MVP of the playoffs. A goalie who has a decent chance of maybe jumping up to be the backup goaltender this season. Uh, half decent chance of that, I would say. Hmm. We have to do this. It's it's overdue at this point. We all know it. But that right there is what we need to turn things around. We need to go back to the early stages of this series, even if just for a short time, and hope that that's enough to turn things around as Taylor Hall retires. Nylander, quite a few guys, actually. I do want to look at our team to see if Hall is the only one to retire. Hall and Ghost Bear, we signed as depth options this season. So they are both gone. And we'll see what happens from this point on. The draft is here. Let's do this. I don't know exactly what I'm going to do with the Reddens and Fragapanis of the world. Matter of fact, that's the first thing we can look at because I'm sticking to the rules of this as far as not trading for picks. Dylan Redden, we already know, is gone. I think Ivanov. I, I, I don't want to get rid of Fragapani, man. Because that's just, that's the worst part. Is when you have to get rid of somebody when you haven't won in a series like this. You know, the, the one name who's been here from the start. And you have to ditch him. It's, ah, oh, it's the worst. It is the worst. We know Dylan Redden's leaving. We have to tear it down. We have to. And it really sucks to say, but it's true. I'm going to try to send Fragapani to a team that wants him. And to a team that could be competitive. And to a team that could afford him. Fucking send him to Edmonton, a team that knows how to get it done in the playoffs. Unfortunately, it's not looking like many teams can uh, afford him that want him. St. Louis, I'd really prefer to not send him to an Eastern Conference team, though. I think for obvious reasons. Washington is our one real hope here. Which, you know, well, then again, I mean, it's not as if we're getting value back. Howard Fragapani. <sighs> Thank you. But your time's up. Your time is up here in California, sir. We have to do this. Our window is closed. We need to get more high-end picks that we're never going to get as long as Howard Fragapani, Dylan Redden, as long as they're here. Fragapani is off to Washington. Howard Fragapani is off to Washington. The goaltending, there's a decent chance. I mean, between, yeah, Fragapani, Crab, and Ockerland, we're going to have to decide. Crab and Fragapani are both on expiring deals. We're going to have the money to sign everybody. It's just a matter of who gets traded where. Among defensemen, the big question is whether or not I keep Zeeler for a bit of a veteran presence. Now, he is still half decent and still putting up points. I think for the moment, he stays, but we'll double check back. We know Dylan Redden's gone without us doing anything. Nazarov is gone without us doing anything, and I suppose Ivanov is the next big one to worry about. What I'm going to do... Is go through this draft and some of the extra departures I'll leave up to you guys. But needless to say, the pressure is on here. Holy shit, Keith Hartnell. Uh, the pressure is on here. Jesus, like enough. To have a solid draft. Like, we need to do very, very well here. And of course. A lot of these grades aren't completely accurate, but I'm going to still trust some of these top grades. 
Morozov was... Eh, he's okay. Decent potential, at least. Who else? I mean, my god, the amount of... Okay, so there we go. Now we finally start to dip to where there's no A grades. Cool. So we... Let's go back up to the top here. Or not, I can hit back one too many times. That's fine. It's amateur hour here for the Golden Seals. Uh, there was Hartnell, who did very well for Saskatoon. If those are accurate, they're tremendous. There's probably a better chance of him being a power forward than a grinder. I gotta be honest. Solani comparison. That is probably too good to pass up. Then there's Plekhanov, who has a great shot, and with medium elite, might be more trustworthy. There's Malkin, who has a ridiculous uh, grade spread as well. 17 years old, though. So depending on how he is, that could really change things. We have a Lofsen. With a Subban comparison, which again is ridiculous and fairly accurate. We know he's going to be an offensive defenseman. Yeah, I was going to say about that height too, even if it's not guaranteed. Reese Frazier, also looking fairly interesting. I'm, uh, I'm going to do something I normally wouldn't do. But, I mean, if we could trust Hartnell, right? Which we, can, which we really can't. But that great shot, we know, is going to be somewhat accurate. To me, I mean, Hartnell, Plekhanov, Malkin. Normally, we'd go Plekhanov, for sure. I'm going to trust the scout and take Keith Hartnell to Saskatoon Blades. Let's take the risk. Let's do it. What's the worst that happens? What's the worst that happens? Medium top, 675. Let's go. There we go. Okay, thank God. He is indeed a power forward, which you can kind of tell by the magic hands and puck protection. Not bad for a 20th overall pick. A 75 overall, Keith Hartnell. One season, maybe two. Jesus Christ, Vegas got a steal and a half. My God, some of these higher overalls. One season, maybe two back in the WHL, and that's it. Then he's good to go. That's all it takes. So that is a pretty damn good selection. We'll check back to see if that was the right call. But already, you factor in someone like Keith Hartnell. Say we have some lottery luck next year if we miss out, things could go very well for us. Now, in fairness, Malkin might have been the better pick because he's a year younger and can go straight to the AHL. But it is what it is. It is what it is. So really, those are going to be my two picks. So either way, we wouldn't have gone wrong. So I'm fine with that. Let's see who else is available here. B's and C's. So far, like Vorobioff, even though we know nothing about him. A couple of medium nines. What about this medium seventh who's not confirmed? B's and C's. Is there anybody else? What about Silas Hansen? B's and C's. B's and C's there as well. Uh, Manderville has a phenomenal name. Shh, no thank you, though. Setaguchi, I don't like the potential. Ahmad Klein has a good shot. What about the book? Ezra Book. Not as great, though, unfortunately. Tursum Baev, also not that great. What about Morrison with two N's? B's and C's, not bad. And then we have the Morgan Steve Morgan Steves. Morgan Steves. Okay, let's look at who we have pinned here. And in terms of the grades, so let's see. We have Klein. Mostly C is about an A and a B. I would probably take Klein over Vorobiov. Although we could probably get Klein in the next round. Morrison. We'll take off the list. Baron, three Bs there for him, three for Galvin. It's got to be Morgan Steves. I know the grades aren't locked in, but that's the guy to take the risk with. He's 6'5". He's got to be a power forward. Has to be a power forward. I'm willing to do it. Morgan Steves. Let's take him. Power forward, low 6. 64 overall. So a better pick than what Toronto just picked up. Uh, whether or not he was the right choice, time will tell. But overall, I don't hate that pick. Yeah, for the most part. I mean, shit, this might not even be the strongest draft. So quite happy with that, actually. Quite happy with that. Let's see who we have here in the third round. Dufresne, party of five. Dufresne. 
Uh, you get to eat when you find the Dufresnes. Who knows what comedian that's from. If you do, your life is awesome, just like mine. Uh, let's see. Who else do we have here? Who else? Hello, Dwayne Rankin. Uh, don't know if I trust that, though. We'll still pin him. Uh, Nachushkin. Also, probably not great. Anybody else? Braylon Yansevsky. Yeah, at this point, it's... Looking a little bit rough, ever so slightly. Francois Huberdeau, eh. What about Kalikov? Also, a bit meh. Trey Riley, also quite meh. Kapitanov, yeah, we're struggling right now. Hello, medium six, though. There we go. Stefan, the fucking Stefan. Oh, my God. Yes, please. With that shooting ability. You're 20, though, so you're an overager. Uh, you know, the rest of your game has to come along, but... You're probably the best option. Dolly Wall might be decent, and Nazarov, eh, kind of rough. So, in terms of the pinned players from this point, I think we have a, a fairly straightforward decision here, don't we? He's a little bit down the board, but Stefan Vieno is going to be the pick, the overager. Is a 64, medium top six. All right, so a little bit lower than I thought. The offensive stats aren't horrible. But yeah, see, that's why I don't take overages too much, man. I don't think he's ever going to make it. It was worth it, though. I mean, the other ones we would have had to hope as we get pick number 420 again. Uh, the other ones we would have had to have hoped for some crazy development. Uh, like with Nazaroff, for example, who's 17, but he's worth trying to get that crazy development out of. Uh, Kostitsin is a bit meh. Roussel is a bit meh. Frederick Erickson also not that great. We have the goalie Rich Fain, who is probably worth it for a 17-year-old. Barry Craig and Malakoff, not that great. What about Brandon Eaton? Also not that great. Eaton Elliott's probably a medium sixth, or if I had to guess. Uh, Joaquin Gabo. Eh, not that great, unfortunately. Svensson, who else do we have here? Stillman's not that great. Is there anybody with solid grades that is worth taking? I almost don't even care about the potential. I mean, I do care about the potentials at this point. Josh Nichols. Ah, Josh Nichols. Why does that sound familiar? Shh. Why does that sound familiar? I don't know. Wasn't that... Wasn't that... Hold on. Aha! That was Josh Peck's name on Drake and Josh. I knew it. I'll take him for that. No, I won't. He's actually bad shit. <laughs> I'm like, I think that's what this is, but I don't want to say it in case I'm totally wrong. That's exactly what it was. Uh, let's see. Visentine, not that great. Guillermo Hadar, also not that great. So yeah, this draft is looking rough right now. Who do we have pinned here? So we got a medium nine in Rina, so it comes down to Nazarov or Fain. Let's take the goalie. Rich Fain, 19-year-old from the Vancouver Giants, is fringe. 60. Damn. He dropped a little bit further than I would have hoped. So the draft started off strong, but since then it's been uh, it's been a bit inconsistent, we shall say. Uh, Chubasov, again, just too low of an overall. We have McFarland, Byzantine. Of course, we've seen some of these guys. What about Hadar here? Guillermo Hadar, again, not that great, unfortunately. Chubarov, eh. It's got to be somebody, right? Castingway, also not looking that good. Vishnevsky, could be worth it. Wish he wasn't 19. But he, uh, yeah, he's 19. If he was younger, he'd be the guy we're taking because he could actually develop. That is not going to happen. DeMaio, not looking that good. We have Paris Hogan, not, ah, uh, he's not bad. The D in skating, but not bad. Murley, Perot, yeah, it's, it's rough for us right now, man. Timofey Voinov. Yeah, B's and C's could be worth it. Hello, Gregory Konowalczyk. He's 19 and isn't going to have the highest overall, but 
You know, despite the fact we just took a different goaltender, I think he is the guy. Let's see, anybody there? Not really. Okay, so I think that decision's been made for us. Uh, we are going to go, oh my god. Now I know what some people are saying. My god, you should have checked before you took that other goalie. You're right. You're right. I got nothing to say to that, except that you're right. Uh, Connor Walchuk. Welcome. Welcome aboard. 60 overall, medium elite. Not bad. We still have two picks left in this draft. So we have a little bit of time. And let's continue to double check here. So we also have Petrangelo, who might not be all that bad. Uh, Serrata, probably not that good. Fisher, listed as a gem, but he's... Eh, low elite's not bad, though. We can trust that. C's and D's... 18-year-old gem in Richmond. Let's see, is there anybody here who actually has solid grades? I doubt it, but there's a possibility. Uh, Irving's not terrible, but we're at a low six territory, and I'd rather have it not be confirmed. Come on, there's got to be somebody good, right? Like Bruliette, who's a starter, so we know that's not going to work. Okay. So out of our pinned players here, we have Voinov, who is not looking that bad outside of the skating. Another medium elite goalie and Petrangelo. Pat Petrangelo, or Peter Angelo, potentially. Uh, and then there's Fisher in Richmond. So I think, I think, I think. Not that I want to take a third goalie. Well, God damn, it might be worth it. I'm going to take Timofey Voinov, the defenseman. Low six. Yikes. I thought it was a half-decent chance, despite the low skating, that he might be okay. He was very much not okay. That leaves us three others here. Fisher's 18. Richmond is 19. So Fisher has a bit more development time. Or we just take another goalie and hope for the best. I gotta be honest, when in doubt, go for the goalie, but we have a couple as it is. Let's take Kelvin Fisher, who's gonna be a very low overall. 47, but he is a low elite, and he might be able to develop. So the big news there, I'd say more than anything, is the acquisition of Hartnell with the 20th pick, and also, of course, uh, the departure of one Howard Fragapani. Because we had to. As much as that sucks, it's just a fact. We were in a holding pattern. And we're not done yet, to be honest. We are not done yet. We go over to goaltenders. Where, I have to admit, I'm going to let Crab and Fragapani go to the free agent list as RFAs. And we're going to try to get compensation. Uh, Stu Crab, 912 save percentage. Esteban Fragapani with a 917. We'll see if either get picked up. We do have Ockerland, who might be able to develop four overall points within a year. Uh, not to mention, I mean, aside from that, our goaltending is going to suck. Uh, but that's kind of the point, isn't it? So we'll qualify Crab. We will qualify for Agapani. Chance of them coming back. I don't think Fox is going to develop, but still, we'll sign him and play him in the AHL uh, this season. Amongst defensemen... Booka Boom, I think as well, I'm going to qualify, see what kind of offer or compensation he'd get us, and maybe he comes back. Hancock, it just, you know, might be a one-year deal for him. Uh, McCutcheon, we can let go of. He was never going to sign. Well, I mean, we signed him for depth. Uh, so Yandel will be signed. Low four. God, he's never going to make it, though. You know what? Yandel's going to be gone. Second round picks. That was a bit of a swing and a miss. I just don't think he's going to develop. And uh, Reitz was a sixth round pick. So we're going to be a bit ruthless here and get rid of both of them. McCult is Canadian, so can't go down to junior yet, unfortunately. Uh, Hancock would improve how good that... Uh, that AHL defense is for this next season. So we are going to sign him, hopefully, to a one-by-one. One. 
On the right, time has come. Dylan Redden is no longer a California Golden Seal. Morose will absolutely be signed in his place. And I'm thinking here for Morose, we're not going to go way the hell up there. We'll just do the three years. We'll make him a little bit more likely to accept. And uh, we'll go 375. I could drop it a little bit more than that, but we'll go 375 for three years. Boro is an interesting one where he is up to a third uh, line option. He's not asking for much, though, and is only asking for a one-year deal. So I'm going to drop that to $2 million for this next season, and we'll see if he's willing to accept that. Clifford is a low nine. He was a fifth-round pick in 2031. He will be dropped due to that low potential. Among, whoops, among left wings, Gregory Cox, that's a tough one. We know Nazarov is gone. I'm thinking Vita Luoma is probably gone as well. I mean, it's tough because he had a 43-point season. The problem with him was just, you know, nothing in the playoffs to follow that up. He was so bad. The former second-round pick. He's not going to get any better. I think Vita Luoma is gone as well. Soro isn't going to get any better. Former second-round pick. He's not bad, but we are looking to take a step back. He's going to be gone as well. Uh, McCammond will be re-signed. We're going to go for one year at 1-2. Uh, Hartnell might be signed, depending on how he develops. Cox is an interesting one where, yeah, you know, he, he, qualify him. Qualify him. He's great. But we might be able to get a ton of compensation for him if he's looking for nine million bucks. There's a decent chance he comes back anyway, so we'll see what happens there. Uh, Ivani, I'm doubting your ability to develop, but we'll still sign you for one more year. Chuko will definitely not be developing. Another man, we are terrible in the second round. Apparently, Chuko is on the way out, and then among centers, Sarno. How much are you looking for? Not much, so we wouldn't get much in terms of compensation. Anyway, we are going to try and get the discounts on you. And that would be yeah, about two and a half. We could lower it a little bit more, but that should work. And then Marlo should also be signed for the AHL roster. So needless to say, this next season is going to be very interesting. As Moroz rejects Hancock, Ivani, Boro, Marlowe, Fox, Sarno, McGammond, all accept. So we'll give, uh, oh, we'll give Moroz what he deserves money wise. Because that's fine. And then, like I said, we'll see what we can get for Buka Boom and for Cox. Moroz, I don't think we'd be getting as much. If he rejects this, I'll let him go to free agency as an RFA. He accepted. All right, cool. I mean, I don't, I don't exactly want to get rid of him. He's a freaking 30-goal scorer. So there's that. Right, let's go ahead. I don't really care about the contract years for our scouts, but I should. So let's, uh, let's do this. Let's do this. Sign who we should. Because I care more, obviously, about seeing what type of compensation we get rather than making sure that we have the best scouts hired. But still, I should make sure. So, there we go. Let's hope they all accept. They should. Let's get the free agency and see if we're bringing in any sort of half-decent compensation. So... Oh, God, no Redden. And we might not be done. Again, I'm going to leave it up to you guys as far as whether or not someone like Ivanov stays on this team. We could ditch him as well, depending on what the rest of the team's looking like. Let's start simming towards the season, and we should be getting response as far as whether or not someone's offer sheeted or if they're coming back for one season. Uh, similar to what we've seen with Nazarov. As Bukaboom gets offer sheeted 5-2... 5-2-5 five five for three years. That would give us an extra second round pick where we have been 
hot garbage. He's 23, medium top four. Fairly well-rounded. Can we find somebody better with a second-round pick? Maybe? I'm going to say yes. Now, money-wise, is he worth that contract? No, but obviously money isn't that big of a concern for us. I'm going to take that pick. I'm going to take that pick. We pick up a second-round pick for Julius Bookaboom. He is off to the Vancouver Canucks as we continue to tear this team down as best we can. Within the rules of Draft of Glory, which, again, no trading. This is, this is the only way back is to willingly tear it down with no compensation. It's just the way it is, man. Uh, I don't have any plans for Stu Crab. Thank you. Gregory Cox has been offer sheeted. 11 million bucks over five years from the Buffalo Sabres. We would get a first, second, and third round selection. Gregory Cox is a tremendous player. He's 24. He has room to get a tad bit better as a sixth round pick. Oh my god, the fucking puck skills. The fucking puck skills. Oh, God, a first, second, and a third for Gregory Cox. He's 24. You can't tell me he couldn't be the veteran of the team. You cannot tell me he couldn't provide that veteran leadership for this team. But a first, second, and a third round pick, man. That is going to be where we end the episode. I want to know from you. How far we go with this. Do we take the compensation for Gregory Cox, a first, a second, and a third round pick? On top of that, on top of that, do we let go of Ivanov and Zeeler to fully attempt to tank this season? Or do we hold on to them? Let me know. That goes for pretty much any player that you think. It might be better for us to get rid of. Of course, by get rid of, I mean willingly let them walk. So keep that in mind. The seventh round pick swap. Goalie-wise, we know changes will be made. This team is not yet set in stone. But needless to say, we'll be taking that step backwards in this upcoming season that we probably should have taken sooner. It's the end of an era. No Fragapani, no Dylan Redden. Nazarov's gone. Vita Luoma's gone. Numerous members of this team are gone. Now it's just a matter of seeing what we can do in the draft over the next few years to try and make one late push before we hit the 25-year limits. Thank you guys for watching. I appreciate the continued support with this series. I know it hasn't exactly gone to plan. I'm not saying that the same people are saying this, but it is funny when, you know, you have a series that's successful and people are like, oh my god, all you ever do is win. And then we have a series like this and you have some people being like, well, you're not winning anymore. So what? It's not as interesting. Socks, I'm not saying that you said that, okay? I'm not. You get the point, though. You never know how a series is going to play out, especially a challenge series like this. You know, you would have thought with that core that we had on both, you know, every side of the puck. The goaltending with Sestito, that amazing defense with Niedermeyer, uh, Fuller, that we would have been able to win, and we didn't. And now it's kind of sort of panic mode just to see how much we can do. But let me know. I mean, you look at the trade value, too, for Cox. That's more than we'd ever get back for him trading him. So let me know what you think, though. Do we keep Gregory Cox? Who stays? Who goes? Let me know suggestions down below. Thumbs up any comments you agree with, and I'll see you guys in the next one where it's the first season for the rest of our lives. I don't know how to phrase it. You get the point? Yeah, we're going to be bad.